I'm very pleased to announce that today we have some awesome new Bad Batch content. Hyperspace Stories issue number 10 has come out and I'm going to give you my spoiler review. I'm going to talk about some things the Bad Batch came across and the main plot points that are really important. But on top of this, we also have some new details for our favourite group of clones, thanks to the new guidebook Dawn of Rebellion. This book does a great job of giving the galactic context to the time period we're dealing with, the Imperials, the Rebels, the Smugglers, and it also gives us new descriptions for each member, and there is something fascinating in Omega's description that teases a not-yet-revealed twist that we might see in Season 3. Before we dive into any of that though, my dear friends, please be sure to hit that big red subscribe button if you've not done so, and also hit the bell to be alerted every time that I post a new video. But no more jibber-jabber, let's dive straight into it. So Dawn of Rebellion was an absolute treat to read, especially as a prequels fan, because they acknowledged the delegation of 2000. These were originally in the deleted scenes of Revenge of the Sith, and while they were already canon, having an entire section dedicated to them is a pretty major acknowledgement with the various senators. I really didn't expect a Disney sourcebook to bring back the likes of Fang Zar, who deserves the recognition because look at that beard. Damn! Turta Neil, Tana Kadaman, Mina Tills, Ni Alavar, Svit Konkorkil, or Male D. It's nice to see them integrate the new Disney canon shows with elements that meant quite a lot to George Lucas. So connecting this to the Bad Batch, we have a really nice section about Senator Ryo Chuchi and the clone rights movement. There is a nice timeline that details the end of the war all the way up to the next phase of the military. And this is where we get our first juicy detail. They mention the use of crosshair, and while they don't state exactly what his purpose is, we've all kind of assumed he's going to be a prototype for a new stormtrooper, phase zero dark troopers. In this book, they tease there is more. A secret project for the Emperor, only Dr. Hemlock is in the know about. And this could just be the Dark Trooper program, but it's worded as if there is something bigger. They say, quote, The Emperor still has an interest in cloning and genetic manipulation. The aberrations embodied by Clone Force 99 are of great interest to Royce Hemlock. Project War Mantle and then the Emperor's decree and use of the Defense Recruitment Bill signaled some really bad news for the clones, but Crosshair, and you might argue Tech's body, are of great use to Dr. Hemlock, who has direct orders from Palpatine for many different experiments, which we're probably going to see in Season 3. I think it's going to be pretty spicy. Damn. Okay, so now moving on to the subject of Omega. We've been talking about her identity since the first season, notably the fact she has pure, first-generation Django DNA, but with some modifications and enhancements, the largest of which we assumed is the fact she's female. By the end of the Bad Batch season 2 showed us, there are more female Django clones out there including the scientist Emery Carr. And now Dawn of Rebellion, this new guidebook, has teased we might be in for another twist in Season 3. We haven't got Omega figured out just yet. There are more enhancements we don't know about. Check out what they say. This is the paragraph. She shares the baseline genetic template as her brothers, but it's been altered by Camino and scientist Nala Say in as of yet unknown ways. Ooh, what could this mean? Is there some secret, deeply rooted genetic code? Something that could be activated? This appears to be something we're probably going to learn in the final season in 2024. And so now, onto Hyperspace Stories issue number 10. We have some brand new Bad Batch content. Damn. And you're not going to want to miss this one, this amazing Star Wars comic, because years before the evil Dr. Hemlock, there was a Dr. Crail who made his own version of the Bad Batch in battle droid form and Clone Force 99 come face to face with them. So in case you've not been following this comic series, as I've covered on my channel from time to time, the centre of it revolves around a young female Wookiee, Vivine, the last gift her father gave her, a soft toy, and it contains something mysterious that has yet to be unveiled. There is something her father gave her inside the doll, but after her father was killed by General Grievous, and Anakin and Obi-Wan rescued her, the toy has been lost, and in this comic, the Bad Batch finds it, this is before they recruited Echo, and before they met Omega, so it's just Wrecker, Hunter, Tech, and Crosshair. Wrecker finds the toy, calls it his stuffy, and demands to keep it, but Tech and Crosshair remind him they're in the middle of a battle, and they've got a very important mission. They're sent to a moon in the Outer Rim, a forest moon called Highlanth. At first they wonder why they were sent there. Why couldn't the Regs do it? Why do they need special forces? Well, they soon find out why. 
there is a droid factory on this moon, run by the evil Dr. Crail, who seems to know all about the Bad Batch. He knows their abilities, and was inspired by them to create his own Bad Batch, made out of super battle droids, some of which look a lot like Grievous, ironically. So the worry from the point of view of the Republic is that Dr. Krell was going to sell his inventions to Count Dooku and the CIS would become stronger with greater, more powerful droids. And basically, just to summarize, Wrecker loses his stuffy after he faces an enormous Transformer-like droid. They confront Dr. Krell at his facility, and while the droids are rather terrifying, they are no match for the likes of Wrecker, Crosshair, Hunter, and Tech. So they arrest the Doctor, Wrecker laments the loss of his stuffy, and Tech tells him this, perhaps we should fly over where you lost it, see if we can locate it, and Wrecker says, now nah, we'll never find it, that little stuffy is gone. And so with that said, in the Havoc Marauder, they depart, but back on Highlanth, where they just were, in the aftermath of the defeated droids, a blue Lagomorph junk dealer finds the doll. Lots of good junk, so much junk, good junk, good scrap. We'll be able to sell for many credits. Ooh, what's this? They pick up the doll. Interesting. Not the usual junk, but might have value. Yes, might have value. And that is where the comic ends. So they're keeping this going, this doll that's passed through many hands, and even by the time of the Empire Strikes Back, Vivine is still looking for it. The other day we covered an earlier issue where Vivine hires Boba Fett to track it down, with no success. But even though the Bad Batch never met Vivine, this shows earlier crossovers between them and Wookiees, before they met Gunji, and I'm wondering if later in the timeline, Gunji and Vivine know each other. Vivine is still alive by the time of The Last Jedi, but I've got to wonder what happens to Gunji after The Bad Batch Season 2. I really love this comic, primarily because it has more crosshair, earlier in the timeline when he's still working with his brothers, and he has so much respect for them, they work so well as a team. There's even a really nice foreshadowing moment. He tells Hunter he would never question orders. So again, it shows you the kind of soldier mindset he has, with or without the chip. So there you go my dear friends, some new Bad Batch content to kickstart your weekend. What did you think? I just summarized some of the important bits, but this comic is very well worth a read. Any breadcrumbs of Clone Force 99 content is always welcome, but share your thoughts in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. May the Force be with you, always.